This animation shows a fly-through over part of the Northwest Atlantic Mid-Ocean Channel, or NAMOC, a submarine channel that wends its way for more than 3,800 kilometers from Hudson Strait in the north, through the Labrador Sea, and around the Grand Banks of Newfoundland. The channel is recreated using new multi-beam bathymetric data acquired during Expedition 102 aboard the German research vessel Maria S. Mirian in summer 2021. Shown here is a render of the JEBCO 2021 bathymetric grid of the Labrador Sea with the multi-beam data draped over it, looking to the north. The southern tip of Greenland is to the east and Newfoundland and Labrador are seen to the west. The animation starts just east of the northern tip of Flemish Cap at about 49 degrees north and proceeds northwards to the source region of Namok, seaward of Hudson Strait at about 60.5 degrees north. Dark blue colors are deep and reds are shallow. The regional bathymetric gradient of the seafloor, which dips slightly to the south, has been removed with a low-cut filter to colorize the depth of the channel uniformly relative to the levees, so the depth color scale is relative. Pinnacles of red are basement outcrops. Vertical exaggeration is 20 times. For scale, the channel is about 5 kilometers wide at its base and 100 meters deep. As we zoom in, note the steep walls and box shape of the channel, as well as its general sinuosity. Also, keep an eye out for depositional patterns along the channel floor. The respective height of the western levee on the left, relative to the eastern levee, and multiple tiers in the channel walls in certain places that represent mass failure scarps and erosional terraces. Here you can see a couple of basement outcrops in the red pinnacles. If you look at the channel floor, you can see depositional patterns. You can see a particularly good head scarp below us there now. You can see the width of the channel in this location and a bit of a channel tall wag as it makes its way around this bend, perhaps confined in part by these outcrops. Here the channel broadens and the eastern levee is almost absent. Here you can see on the left, one of the few tributaries reaching into Namok from the western side. Again, notice some of the patterns within the channel floor. You can see the western levee is higher, but you can also see some complexities on the western levee due to mass failures or slumping into the channel. We're approaching now the area of confluence of the IMOC, the Hermosuic Mid-Ocean Channel, and NAMOC. The IMOC has a much more braided appearance and much shallower channels than NAMOC. So it appeared to, that there are quite different sedimentary processes that are involved in their creation. Again, you see small meandering as we go further north. Also in this northern region, note in particular the high western levee, the well-developed higher western levee relative to the eastern levee. If you look closely at these meanders, you'll see what appear to be almost point bars at the uh, inside edge of each of these bends. Aside from these small, low-amplitude meanders, the channel is actually remarkably straight. Note here, too, on the western levee that there's a lot of channels and gullies that reach into the channel floor. So it would appear that there's erosion taking place along the channel walls as well. We're coming up to the headland, headwater areas of the channel now. You can see that the channel bifurcates and in fact, the eastern branch is probably the more dominant branch or the more active branch of late. And as we get further north, we notice from sub-bottom profiler data especially that the area is actually filled with debris flows. Here we'll take a reverse fly-through of the channel and actually go at a lower altitude and much faster. <laughs> 